Majority of people in low-income countries live in rural areas and slums in cities where they engage in small-scale farming and other informal income-generating activities to earn small incomes to support their families. Many people believe that very small incomes lead to a hand-to-mouth existence in which income is consumed as soon as it's earned and therefore there's no need for financial tools. But how true is this? Jina langu ni Dorothy King, naishi hapa. Niko na watoto watano. Nafanya tu ukulima wa mboga na nyanya. Kitambo si kwa naweka pesa, nikipata natumia tu ya tena. Nikipata shida naweka kitambo hapa. Na nini kopesha pesa? Lakini vile niliingia kwa chama, naweza aenda kukopesha pesa pale na nimunye madawa nipige kwa Low income families are faced with the challenge of managing their small incomes to overcome daily needs and emergencies over time and through the cycles in their life. So, how do low income earners manage their finances to cope with the economic, seasonal, and household life cycle? Many people in poor countries lack access to formal financial services and so rely heavily on informal financial services. These are financial services that occur outside the regulation of a monetary authority. They include the loans, insurance, savings and transfers, also known as the list. Informal financial services are necessary to low-income families as they are not served by traditional banks and other formal financial institutions. Also, they are informal Employment income do not provide enough financial security as they vary from day to day. A day's work as the Matatu conductor on the route to Makadara will earn Lucas Ogada 200 shillings. But like most people here in Karyobangi, he doesn't know what he'll earn tomorrow. Today you can get 600, tomorrow you get 7, the following day you can get 1,000, even, even you can earn sometimes less than 200 shillings. Informal financial services provide the low-income earners with financial security due to their ease of access made possible by close proximity, close relations of people involved, and quick access to money with no paperwork required. The economic cycle is the natural fluctuation of the economy between periods of expansion and contraction. It affects incomes and living standards directly. Within this bigger economic cycle, the poor live within their own economic cycle, which is perhaps why they are hit harder by the effects of the bigger cycle. This phase of the economic cycle is characterized by a high cost of living in which even the basic necessities become too expensive for the poor. Inflation hits the poor harder as their incomes do not rise as quickly as the prices of items. Even borrowing becomes too expensive due to high interest rates. During inflation, low-income people use savings groups such as Roscas, Fastless to save and take lower interest loans to take care of their needs. During these stages, economic activity declines, income and other resources that support life and standards of living become unstable. The lower productivity makes it even harder for low-income families to support themselves, which sends them knocking on the doors of moneylenders and paylenders who charge very high interest rates of about 20 to 30 percent. During this phase, the economy stabilizes and business activity smoothens. The formal and informal sector work together through linkages with microfinance institutions, NGOs, and banks to provide savings and loan services to low income families. An example is Kegenya, a partnership of Equity Bank and a mobile network company Orange, who provide members of the Kenya's Care Savings Group with easily accessible savings and loan services.
The members can access account information on their phones and there are bank outlets at close proximity where they can carry out transactions without the need to travel long distances to the cities. Farming is the dominant activity for the world's poor living in rural areas. About 70 to 80 percent of the people living in rural areas practice agriculture as their main source of income to support their families. Sana sana kilimo champunga. Kilimo champunga. Champunga, yeah. Dukina nongeze kipato kukubwa. During different agricultural seasons, farmers have different requirements from their farm activities which require many different financial instruments in response. Planting time is mostly in the rainy season. More labor and inputs such as seeds, fertilizers are required, and so farmers require finance for the inputs and insurance for the crops. Traders and market trade moneylenders are important financiers at this stage. Traders give input items while market trade moneylenders give out loans to the farmers and both accept produce for due payment. Insurance is provided by small schemes such as India's index-based crop insurance meant to protect the smallholder farmers in case of crop loss. This is the lull period between planting and harvesting season. During this period, there is not only less food for the families but also less agricultural activity. Consumption declines to 2 to 1 meal a day and many families depend on food aid. However, others tend to neighbors and friends for small loans. Shop owners also allow credit to trusted customers and accept payment later. People also take out loans for consumption from money lenders with the hope to repair them after the sale of their produce during harvest. This is the joyful season when family consumption rises to two to three meals a day. The farmer also repays traders and loans from market trade money lenders with part of the produce harvested. Smallholder farmers produce for family consumption but also sell surplus to neighbors and community members. Some produce is sent to the markets through small market outlets. Farmers also carry out a lot of savings during this period within their savings groups to buy inputs during the planting season and also for the lean season when there is less agricultural activity. The household life cycle focuses on the evolution of life in the individual household and financial instruments that are used to respond to needs and emergencies during the different stages of the cycle. Of these stages, only the youth, education, home building, and illness and death will be discussed. The youth are future family builders, yet they face a lot of financial exclusion. Also, a lot of children in poor countries are HIV and AIDS or malaria often, and there are many child-headed families. This has created a pressing need for the youth and children to learn how to obtain and manage incomes. In many developing countries, organizations such as Catholic Relief Services are working on youth development programs that teach the youth and children in these countries ways to manage finances and encourage them to save. Kids have also started engaging in kids savings groups to support their future. Naitwa Fatuma Mkombozi, na miaka 15, ni mwenyekiti wa kikundi cha ushirikiano. Tukifika kwenye kikao cha wiki, kwanza tunaanza na kauli mbiu. Education is a fundamental need for a better future. Parents in low-income families strive to provide their children with education to ensure a brighter future for them. They take advantage of the loans in their savings groups to provide for their children school fees and supplies. Nyocha nginya temo kuwa mamo kuthi school. Kuro nyaka nyocha wacha kubede kusaluka, abiro takao pesa to nyati thigo school, tadonka duwako to nyati to sumu. Sanyo the temo fomfo. Young families need funds to buy or rent property, buy home assets as well as income generating assets. Low income families get microloans from MFIs and NGOs such as World Vision, which through its Vision Fund program provides microloans to women in countries like Cambodia to start their own micro enterprises to provide for their families. Low income earners also save informally at home with relatives employers and deposit collectors or money guards 
known as Susu Collectors in Ghana and Chite in India. They also use mobile banking services for small savings and loans. In the last six months, Lucas has taken out two loans over his mobile phone. The first loan I took, I used it to, pay, to repay another loan I had from somebody. I repaid it from loan again. Then I requested another one. They gave me immediately. Then that one I used to pay my house on it. A loan from Mshwari is very, very easy to get. Mshwari is a mobile banking scheme provided by Safaricom to low-income families in Kenya which enables them easy access to small savings, loans and money transfer services to take care of their household needs and other emergencies such as illnesses. Illness or death of a family member not only cripples the finance and well-being of a low-income family but lends it in debt and poverty. Microloan schemes such as stretcher clubs and burial societies are widely used for these emergencies in low-income settings. Stretcher clubs operate mostly in rural areas. Members make monthly or weekly contributions to cover the cost of transport and medical care at the healthcare center. The name is derived from a tradition where patients are carried on stretchers to the medical center. Burial societies, on the other hand, are community-managed savings funds, usually in urban areas created to cover funeral costs for family members. Households make weekly or monthly payments and the funds are sometimes lent out to earn additional revenue for the group. We have already established that the incomes of the poor are not only low but unstable and unpredictable, which is the main problem. Therefore, the poor need to spread their income over days even when no income comes in or through the stages of the cycle such as recession and the lean season when their income generating activities fail to provide enough income to cover their basic needs. Families living in slums lose property to police bulldozers every time. Illness and death are also major emergencies. In any day during the life of a low-income earner, one of these emergencies is bound to come knocking on their door, and they will need proper financial tools to respond to that knock. As you may have observed throughout all the stages of the cycles, there is not one in which low-income earners have been able to accumulate large amounts of money beyond their basic necessities. They only save small amounts at home or in their savings groups. Even borrowing does not advance large sums that can last for long periods or be used beyond basic necessities. Therefore, low-income earners need financial tools that will last them longer and that are readily available to meet their regular cash flows. This is important for microfinance institutions and NGOs working with the poor to note. Hence why I believe this study of the cycles of informal financial services would be useful for organizations such as One Acre Fund, World Vision and others in helping them formulate financial management strategies and tools that can help the poor survive even during the difficult stages of the cycles. For future research, I would like to recommend the following topics. How can financial vehicles used by the poor be adapted for long-term management of their incomes? How is financial literacy being used to help the poor manage their small income? And as the poor move up or down the poverty ladder, how is their use of informal financial services affected? Thank you.